Are you struggling with your tripod never able to get the proper shot? Struggling to get those overhead shots you've always dreamed of? Or even struggling with your camera always being just out of reach? Yes? Well then you need the Camera Crane 9000! The Camera Crane 9000 will give you improved overhead shots, increased mobility, and impressive versatility. Get yours today, the Camera Crane 9000! Batteries not included. Alright, it's here! Wait, there's a note, and it says, Some assembly required? Aw oh, man! Alright guys, well I guess here we go! Okay, so to start with, I had some of this leftover square tubing that I had from another project. It's quite thick wool, so I think this should be fine. Here I am marking it out and punching it, and then we're gonna cut it down. And then we're going to spot drill first and then use a hole saw to take the bulk of this out. Now I'm cutting this a little bit oversized and you'll see why in a bit here. But that's the main body completed. And then on the lathe I'm making these two little bushings. Now these bushings you'll see why in a bit but one they help me accommodate for the size of the hole saw and two they'll help me for another crucial point later on. Then a quick little snip with the saw to get them in two. And there we go, two little aluminium bushings. Now while I was on the lathe, I took this opportunity to bore out this piece of nylon from a large piece of stock I had. And then I have these laser cut pieces of aluminium that I had made in advance for this project. And now we're going to be making the main pivot. Okay, so to start, we have the obligatory shot of me squaring up some stock and then taking it all to the same height. Now here I'm going to be cutting a bit of a recess so that I can have two bushings that are a little bit taller than this actual stock itself. So that way, when I have this drilled hole and I clamp it all together, I can control the friction fit just by clamping it. And then of course we give everything a nice old chamfer with the desk setup over there. Okay, so now for the actual bushings themselves. I had about 12 of these to make, so I'm making these out of nylon and I'm taking pretty heavy cuts so I can get these done in two passes. At first I was doing them little by little and then I realized I could really just plunge straight in and take those deep, heavy cuts. At least on the little lathe, that's quite satisfying. Then they each got chilled all the way through and a little bit of a part. I guess parting is such sweet sorrow. Okay, so now it's time to make the camera arm itself. Okay, so now our next step is going to be drilling all the holes in this thin wall aluminum tubing. But first, a quick tool tip. Now for these nylon spaces that I made for the bolt to ride on, I'm gonna need a pretty good round concentric hole. Unfortunately, that's not always so easy to come across in thin wall aluminum tube. You can see my first approach here was to use a sort of wood drill bit, thinking it would act a bit like a hole saw. It kind of worked to give me a round hole, but those flutes weren't quite deep enough to clear all the material. So why not just use a normal drill bit? Well, again, a normal drill bit requires way too much tool pressure, and you can see this one was a little bit blunt. Now, yes, you can go ahead and use a Christmas tree drill bit, but you do have to index it from both sides. You've got to drill from one side, and from the other side, something I didn't quite want to do. But now, if we consult the annals of history, we can see that a nifty trick is to grind the drill bit with a 140 degree included angle. That allows the flutes to cut before the drill point breaks through and that allows the drill bit to be supported. As you can see, that gave us the perfectly round hole we were after and allowed us to drill through in one setup. And it actually came out really nice, right off the mill with absolutely no deburring or any other finishing. So yeah, remember that if you ever need to drill through some really thin aluminium or any other type of sheet metal, 140 degrees. Okay, so that is right out of the mill. <laughs> Not bad for a 10mm drill bit, I'd say. 
and hardly a bird to speak of. Right, so that's all of the bushings in place and now we can assemble. These are those washers you guys saw me make in a previous shot and by clamping those together with these nylock nuts, I can control the friction. Okay, so here I am just putting on some spacers to give me the spacing I need and again, we just tighten this all down. Okay guys, now with the camera arm completed, we're gonna need something to mount it to. Now for that, I have this old repurposed speaker stand and aside from the diameter being a bit on the small side, it's perfect for two reasons. One, it is adjustable and two, it already has the legs and the braces intact so I don't have to bolt those. And three, I had it. So we're gonna go ahead and use it. Okay, so first we have our little aluminium spacer down here. That just acts as a bushing so that the tube does not crush and pinch the thin wall of the speaker stand. So first we put in the top spacer, and then the two of these get sandwiched by this nylon spacer that I made. Okay, now to actually assemble the main thing. Okay, well, I'm stoked. Look at this thing. Oh. Now, I just add the springs. Okay, so the springs themselves are really just to counteract the weight of the camera, and in conjunction with the friction of the washers and the plates, they can actually be used to keep it in place once you've moved it into position. So now we're going to be making the actual camera mount. And for that, again, we're just going to need two more of these bushings. And then we can make the actual mounting plate back on the mill. This is just a really simple part. Just get some tapped and drilled holes and a nice little corner chamfered off. And then it's all ready to be put on. Okay, so next we're going to be jumping onto the lathe to make another part. This I'm turning out of some oversized aluminium stock that I had on hand, and it's a pretty simple part. So just turn it down to diameter, tap a threaded hole, and then turn some grooves in it. And then that's the finished part. Next we're just going to tighten it down, add a little bit of grease to it. And then what's cool about this is that it will allow me to adapt this photo head that I had from an existing tripod onto this camera crane and it'll still give me the full range of motion. Okay, so that is the main arm assembly completed and the main body as well. So I made these because I really didn't want just two lines of contact crushing the tube and this will be a lot better of a fit, gives me a lot more control over the friction. And speaking of friction, all of those little washers, when combined with the springs, helps me actually be able to tune it in quite nicely. Now this is a bit of a, a compromise between the Wobi design, which is purely wood and no springs, and Phil Vandalier's design, which has much stiffer springs. By doing my washer design, I can therefore use lighter springs and still have my full range of motion. Now, sometimes these are a little bit daunting, but really the trick behind these is when you're figuring out where to put your pivot points, yeah, you can go and look at lamps, and lamps will typically have three points in the middle, but take a look here. These, when closed, are basically parallel. So as long as you give them enough space to be parallel, that's your mechanism done right there. Finally, we're gonna make the base that this whole thing sits on. So I'm gonna sit back and let you guys enjoy some footage.
Okay, so we're almost there. We're gonna be drilling this tripod base in situ on the steel base. Not ideal, but uh, it's a bit of a compromise. So let's get to it then. Now that's not going anywhere. All right, now to actually add some weight to this thing so it doesn't tip over like you saw in that last shot. And for that, we're gonna be adding some concrete to it. So I mixed up a pretty stiff mix of concrete and here you can just see me filling it all the way down and using a hammer to get it all the way into the bottom so that I don't have voids. This was really handy actually because I didn't have to add extra material and extra weight and I got to keep the base nice and minimalistic. Then once the concrete had cured fully, I could get to painting the thing. I chose to just go with a standard photographic black, as you can see here. And here it is with the wheels attached, and you can see they actually move quite nicely. And that the base itself has quite a bit of heft. Okay, so I gotta say, I am impressed with this thing. Max extension, without the base tipping over, is around, call that 1.4 meters. And I can go all the way down, drop this basically to the floor, to get really low down shots. And I can take this all the way up, way over my head, to get top-down shots if I need them. And even at max extension, the whole thing doesn't tip over. Now, if I do tip it over, it comes back and stabilizes. Now, the long reach of this camera arm is really awesome because now it allows me to finally get those nice overhead shots of lathe and even get some really cool shots of the milling machine. Now I've been looking forward to this because no matter where I put it, sometimes that tripod just kept getting in my way. So yeah, I am well pleased with this thing. All right guys, well that's the camera crane build completed. It's gone a bit in the way of some other projects that I had planned, but I really wanted one of these for a while now, and I think it's gonna help me capture the rest of those projects. So if you wanna catch those, stick around, stick around for more fun, over-engineered builds like this. And yeah, thanks for watching.